This time on Whatever We Want, we talk about the Eternals. Spoilers, major, huge, big spoilers. Their time big goes down spoilers. below if you would like to jump around. We talk everything from the director, um, the first sort of uh, love scene in the MCU, the future of the MCU with Celestials, those post credits, and more. Aliens. Enjoy! What are you? Did that just? It's, <laughs> you, <laughs> wait, hold on. Free better, free, free, free better, free, better. Free, better. I'm including that. Let's jump into things. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, everyone. I had a couple things up top for pre-banter. I wanted to talk about. Oh, we have a giveaway going on right now. This is only an exclusive for YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, statistically, you're not subscribed. Probably like over. I think it's like seventy percent of people that watch these are not subscribed. So if you're not subscribed and you are yeah, entered subscribe. for a chance to give away for a giveaway, we're doing giveaway. Once we hit 101 subscribers, I know 100 is like big milestone, but I'm like 101. Be different. Once we hit 101 subscribers. <laughs> Two of our subscribers will give out uh, six months of Disney Plus on us, or if you have that already, the equivalent monetary value, which is like 40 bucks. So there's two winners, so why not subscribe? There's only 101 people. That's like better odds than a bigger channel, so like why not, you know? I should unsubscribe and then resubscribe. That doesn't count. To... That doesn't count. But <laughs> the people that are already subscribed, they're already inputted into it, so you don't like... Okay. You, so that doesn't okay. help at all. But thank you for bringing that up, because I did think about that. <laughs> I was like, there's going to be someone <laughs> who's going to do that, and that someone was you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. But I do want to talk about other trailers. Book of Boba Fett came out between yes. when we recorded last and now, because we recorded last time a little early. What did you think of that trailer? It was awesome. It's a different direction of the character, which is what I like, you know? Yeah. It's what do you like, mean? I'm not sure if you've read, like, comics and stuff like that, but he's, he's like, more, I don't know. Like, read. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I read. <laughs> he, he, he's more just like stern and like his eye ba- eyebrows grew back in respect from Mandalorian to now. <laughs> I I respect that. I was a little worried because I thought it looked like a little bit of a different feel than Mandalorian. Like this felt not cheesier, but maybe there was just like some unfinished VFX shots or something in there. Um, but then I like did some research, and actually, it is John Favreau and Dave Filoni that are like show running this and like heading this. So. I have faith in them, so I'm really looking forward to this. Same. Then, also, I wanted to mention up top the Morbius trailer. What do you think of that? I liked it. I know a lot of people don't like Jared Leto because, like, his Joker role and stuff like that. Yep. But here's the thing. I think this is the character for him. I think this is where he's going to really start uh, being able to show off his best traits. Sucking blood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but, yeah, you mentioned there was, like, three Spider-Man connections. Yeah, so we, we saw Oscorp, which seemed like the Oscorp building from, from the Garfield uh, Amazing. version. Yeah. And then Tobey Maguire, there's a Daily Bugle. Well, okay, there's, there's a... And also a suit, like, graphic. There's a Tobey like, Maguire suit, but graffiti. it's from the Insomniac game. Well, right? Or at least to- it looks like it's from the Insomniac game. suit is from the Tobey Maguire universe, so... There's also Mi- Michael Keaton from Tom Holland's universe, we think. It could yeah, just be so- the actor Michael Keaton. <laughs> like, hey, you're yeah, pretty cool. It could just be another variation <laughs> You said, of- like, I played a bat, and you're a bat, so, like, yeah. let's keep in touch. <laughs> 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 and he also says, we are Venom, so this connection to... Uh, the Sony universe. So this could take place like in the MCU potentially after No Way Home maybe or like just after that happens like all the worlds are going to be like meshed and tied together. Meshed together? Yeah. It could be. Like the Incredibles. All the little cogs mesh together. That's it's from uh, really the scene in the too. office. Like, Sorry. I, I love the Incredibles. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so I also want to talk about Lightyear really quick up top. Yeah, uh, the trailer we talked about it a little bit last time, but I saw some things when I was editing some TikToks. I thought was really interesting. So, um, the in the one scene when they look like they're going to Dagobah almost, and like this like figure like turns and you see like a red light that I think is like the Zerg bot from Toy Story Two that we saw in the very beginning, like the game when he fights him. So like that was cool. And they're also at the end you see like a, a lineup of all those Zerg bots. So. Zerg going to be coming in? So yeah, I think that confirms that Zerg is going to be in it. I mean, that would make sense, right? Because, like, you know, he's like his mean boy. His mean bad boy. Also, I saw something that I thought was really cool. When, mm-hmm. so, there was, like, a chalkboard that, like, it shows, like, the plan for the mission that Buzz is about to go on. And mm-hmm. what it shows is, like, Buzz Lightyear just traveling around the sun and then jumping back to, like, Earth or his homeworld planet, which is what we see at one point in the trailer. But then as he, like, jumps, I think something will go wrong and he'll end up on, like, that Dagobah kind of looking planet. And and what the chalkboard says is that with this jump, when that happens, like, you jump 
like with light speed and how that works, like time will dilate and you will be like years in the future. So I think I think something goes wrong and like more time passes than is supposed to. And, and then he ends up on Zerg's planet and somehow he makes his way back. Because if you see the colored person that was like his other space cadet, uh, in the very beginning, yeah. she's just like an analyst. But when he comes back later in the trailer, she actually is in like a space ranger outfit. It looks like she's been promoted and has a different look. And she also has the Mark 01 on her suit, which is what Chris Evans, like Buzz Lightyear had. So I think he goes away. They think he's lost. So they replace him as, um, or she takes up his mantle and then he comes back and then they have to like work together kind of thing. That's my hmm. prediction theory. That makes maybe. sense. Do you think there's going to be like a war with Zerg and like all that? Or do you think it's going to be maybe. more like Buzz like trying to like run around and like escape? Maybe it might, that might be like the different acts. Like maybe act one is like him going on this mission and he's trying to escape. And then like the turning point in act two that like leads into the third act finale is like they have to go back very Star Wars style and like blow up the Death Star kind of thing. <laughs> I can see that. Anyways, that's enough. We, we need to get into the, what we're talking about this week. Ready for the intro? Hit me with it. You may want us to talk about this or that, but we don't care. We're going to talk about whatever we want. Blah. Welcome back to Whatever We Want, the podcast where we, Jake and Daniel, to definitely handsome and gentlemen, talk about movies, TV shows, behind the scenes insights, filmmaking techniques, all that jazz, and more. We care about what you want us to talk about. We just say that was a little jingle made up a while ago. You ready to jump into Eternals, Daniel? Yes, the Eternals. What do you Eternally. think overall? Okay, I know a lot of people didn't like the movie. I liked it. I felt like it was good. It wasn't... Okay, here's the thing. It wasn't great. It wasn't amazing. It was good. The, it the did Amazing Spider-Man. It... The good, the okay, <laughs> mediocre Spider-Man. <laughs> Imagine that as the title. <laughs> the mediocre Spider-Man. <laughs> just a normal guy delivering pizza. <laughs> Using his Spidey powers to just deliver pizzas. <laughs> Pizza, pizza time. time. <laughs> but no, so when I say that, I'm not trying to like bash on like the filmmakers or anything, but I'm trying to say that there's, there's obviously there were flaws in the film. I feel like there's other directions that they could have done with different character arcs, which we talked about with like the deviants and stuff like that, which we'll get into. Yeah. Can I mention something quick uh, that, off of that? Yeah. I like what you said, like different characters with the different characters. Like this was a big diverse cast. And I think it's what Marvel has done well is in phase one, they like kind of built up these solo movies that led into the Avengers, and we had seen a lot of these characters before. And then they, with Guardians, they didn't do like solo movies for the individual Guardians. They proved that... Oh, shoot. Sorry. My alarm. Uh, they proved... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What is that for? Also, it's just a nuclear warhead went off, and I'm just like, what's going on? Just, that's my reminder <laughs> to do this. Um, but... Oh, gosh. That's off my train. Ah! Um, oh, yeah. But so with the Guardians, talking about Guardians. Yeah. that you don't have to do individual solo movies for, for all these characters. This world was like James Gunn did a great job of bringing in each of the characters and showing like a taste of their backstory and how they all came together to form this team. And I think that was a great example of like this big ensemble cast movie that did well. Um, and Eternals, I think was another attempt at that. And I just don't think it was done as well as like guardians was, but it, it wasn't like, bad per se but but yeah that's i just wish the characters is what I'm, what I'm trying to say is i wish the characters had more backstory for each of them because there were like a lot of characters and often the main like three if it wasn't the main three i was like okay like yeah these yeah. guys yeah that's um, yeah sorry you go at ahead. the same time there's also some where you like i still even know the names of some of them like i know, I know like like <laughs> I Athena, literally... gilgamesh icarus um ajak you know but then there's there's like the speeder one What's yeah, name? I have that written down for later, but yeah, we'll get there. I just up top, I want to say it had a two hundred million dollar budget, which is very big. And I was looking back, and we just talked about Dune. That was one hundred sixty five, so that's like a lot more than one hundred sixty five. And I felt like Dune almost felt grander, and it um, did. I don't know though, but also I have to you have to consider like this movie was filmed in twenty nineteen, and I think was supposed to come out earlier but because the pandemic was like released later and i think eternals was almost supposed to be like maybe our introduction into phase four of the mcu yeah. um so, and i think that would have been a good introduction if it came out then but now that we've already seen all this other crazy stuff happening i think it fits in differently than it could have if that makes any I sense i think it would have been better place if i'm being honest closer to uh guardians of the galaxy 2 okay because yeah, we got a taste with maybe. ego. 
right? And then I feel like some short time after that, it would have been better to then explain more of the Celestials and, and see how how they influence the universe. Yeah. When I first came out of this, I was like, I really didn't like that. But now that I've had time to like digest it, I think I really did let the critics score get to me. And I really try not to do that, but I think it did. And now that I've had a chance to like kind of step back for that, I'm like, this isn't a bad movie. Like I did have fun in it. I think I, if I were to compare it, I'd put it around like Ultron tier. And, and I know a lot of people put Ultron at the bottom of their list. I don't put it personally at the bottom of my list. I think it's like a mid to low mid tier movie of the MCU. Um, and I, I think it, there's a lot of parallels to Ultron. Like it didn't have as much substance as I would have wanted, but it did so much for the whole world, the grand like world of the MCU in terms of world building and setting up the yeah. future. So that's, that's the thing. If, yeah. if I'm comparing it to Ultron, I feel like I'd prefer to watch this over Ultron. Like I'd rank really? this higher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm also. Again, we also, like, it's also crazy that we have to start considering now. Going back to these earlier movies, we have nostalgia to those now, and that is huge. Yeah, that's in a huge. My perception of how I enjoy a movie. So, like t- to balance that is very difficult to do, which is just crazy. That just shows how long the MCU has been around and, and how much of an impact it had on us coming, like growing up. So, yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's a good point to make. But yeah, no, I feel so. This movie, when I was saying it's good, it. it had a mission and accomplished it very well. And at the same time, there are very high moments in there. Like, there's scenes that I loved oh, yeah. throughout. But there's also s- the shortcomings of it that came along with that. And that's where it kind of brought it back down. It was like all the small little things that brought it back down to like that, that good tier. I would actually still watch this over Black Widow, if I'm being honest. Okay. I still haven't seen um, Black Widow the whole way through. <laughs> So have it. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was at a drive-in. Well, I, I just showed up late to the drive-in. I just mentioning, going back to what I mentioned about the critics, the critic bombing. So Rotten Tomatoes, the way that works is like it's only like a cup, like a hundred or so many so people that like give the critic score. So if those like hundred people, they can't represent everyone in the world. And people often take that as like law and like oh the critic score is like low. And usually they're like kind of on track. Uh, but the audience score is actually a lot better for this one than the critic score. Yeah, what is the audience score for this one? Last time I checked, it was like 70s, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, that's where I'd probably put it at. Um, anyways, the critic score is very low. And this film is also very diverse, especially for mainstream media and a Marvel movie, which is great. But I think some people that are used to, not more traditional, but like older media, they are not used to that. So I think that influences their perception of it and the score they give um so i just i think that's something to keep in mind um i definitely recommend going to see this um I, and i have a lot of good things i want to say about this yeah but same. speaking of diversity let's jump into our famous segment dialogue duty we're not talking about the voice actors we're just talking about the actors and actresses that are in this so it's just duty Wait for the sound clip well, and then it was really hard to sidestep the duty thing thank you chandler it's not just duty because like they <laughs> are saying dialogue uh, ex- and and and, <laughs> and doing like signing dialogue, which I thought was really cool. Okay, yeah, um, that was a good point. Yeah, but yeah, we'll get like there. So factor. first, yeah. we got Cersei, who was uh, Gemma Chan. She actually was in Captain Marvel. She was one of the Kree, like a Kree sh- sniper yep. on her team, and so I, I thought that was really cool. Um, we got Icarus, who was Richard Madden, who also played rob stark in game of thrones dave whitman who is black knight played by kit harrington who is Jon snow in game of thrones um yep. again a show neither daniel have I, or i have seen yet <laughs> don't hate us please <laughs> um thena was angelina jolie uh ajak was salma hayek i'm so sorry i'm gonna butcher a lot of these names i thought she'd be in this more did what did you think of her performance i feel like eh, I felt like she did a good job portraying her character, but I do agree where I thought she'd be in there more. Yeah, when they showed her, like, I don't know. she was, like, dead in the beginning. I was, like, the first time we like, saw oh. her in the present day, I was, like, w- when is the scene of her on the porch? And that came as, like, a flashback later. Yeah. That's another thing, too, the pacing, like, of, like, the flashbacks, stuff like that. I feel mm-hmm. like most movies do it in a very bad way, but I feel like this movie actually did that very well. I liked, we'll, sorry, we'll, yeah, we'll jumping get through that. history, but, yeah, we'll get there. So, yeah. uh... We have uh, Kingo, who is played by uh, Kumail Nanjiani. He was the guy that like got super fit, the Bollywood guy. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like. I thought he was good. Like he's a comedian, and he had a lot of good comic relief. 
What did you think of the fact that he didn't uh, participate in the final battle? That's the, I felt like he could have done more there. I agree. I kind of wish he didn't, but I, I saw a video and someone mentioned that, like, looking back, I like the way they portrayed that. Like, they he said, I agree, like, it's with your family. Like, I agree. He agreed with Icarus. He was like, we can't be the ones to determine these billions of lives being lost. But on the other hand, he was like, I don't want to hurt my family, so I'm just going to step out of this. I think that was... A somewhat mature look at it instead of just like brawling out um yeah. maybe not even mature because you are kind of stepping away from the problem but it was a different approach that like i don't think we've ever really seen in like a big action movie so i thought that was interesting yeah, yeah. and so we had him we had uh sprite by played by leah McHugh. Mm-hmm. McHugh. McHugh. i don't know but i i really liked her story arc just overall because i feel like it would be extremely tough to like go through life just forever stuck in a child's body. Um, And I think that story was shown really, really well. And she portrayed that character really well. And I think it's also smart just from a like logistics standpoint that they made her human at the end. So if, and when they do in Eternals too, it makes sense why she looks more different. Cause like children age, age, uh, obviously in real life. (laughs) (laughs) So if they do like a sequel, like that'll, Makes and he's sense. like, do you think she's still gonna like have powers and stuff like that, or do you think she's just like full on human? Like, it might be a, like, I'm a human, but like I have remnants of my power kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Her powers reminded me a lot of like Loki. Loki, um, yeah, with, that's like her illusions thinking. and stuff. Yeah, uh, we also had Fastos, Fastos, who was played by Brian Terry Henry. He is the tech guy, and he also oh, plays. Yeah. Um, Miles' dad. He voices Miles' dad in Spider Verse. So there you go. There's your I was dialogue. Say, I, I thought it, I thought his name or his voice was familiar. Yeah, he was yeah. also the first. Um, I think like openly gay superhero. Um, so that's really cool. I know there was other ca- gay characters in the MCU. Like uh, Joe Russo played one in Endgame and that like support group with Cap. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this was the first superhero one, and it actually caused like a lot of controversy in like other countries where like like same sex like marriage is like illegal and stuff still which like blows my mind that that's still like a thing like that that it's still illegal in some countries but they are like not showing it in some of those countries which could hurt the box really? office so like i i appreciate that marvel and disney are sticking with their guns and like not cutting that just to get money like this is a real thing in real life and yeah so i i appreciate that marvel is kind of sticking with their guns i think it's ridiculous that some countries are like banning the movie because of that anyways i'm not a world leader i'm just talking about a po- about a Talking about a podcast on a movie. Yep. Words. <laughs> and then we also had uh, Makari, who was the speedster that you were talking about. That's her Makari, name. Makari! That's what it was, yeah. Played by Laura Ridloff. Um, she used to be a teacher, and she's actually, like, deaf in real life. Um, oh. Why can't our teachers be in movies? Like, what the heck? I thought you were about to say, why can't our teachers be deaf? No! Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no. Um... I, I mentioned I leaned over to you when we were doing we were in the movie theater and I was like, this is like the when Marvel does a better um uh, Mar- Superman versus Flash. Yes. Than yeah. DC. <laughs> and then I saw a bunch of memes about that later and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also think it was better. Like I feel like they've improved on the speedster visual effects from even back in Ultron. Like I like these effects yeah. a lot better and how they showed that. I liked her connection with Druid also. Um, yeah. What did you think of Druid? Barry Keoghan played him. I felt like he made sense as a character, but at the same time, he also, I don't know, it was very weird. I he, really he portrayed liked... the character well, oh, but yeah. like just the character in general was just like very cult leader-y. Yeah, which I I'm think like, would be tough to like, that's a, a temptation you have. Like if you can just make people contr- like do your bidding, you have to like work actively to not use that uh, like for your own good constantly and selfish purposes like i really liked his like snap that he had like in i think it was babylon like right before they all split up where he was like no it was in uh techno or something like that okay there i liked it when um he was like i could stop all this like war and this pain with like just a thought and you're not letting me do that to go through that like through generations like Thousands of like genocide of years. and war. Yeah, and, and to know you could yeah. stop that, but are being told just not to and not really given a reason why, like that has got to take a toll on someone like mentally. So, And I thought that was portrayed really well. So I thought that was really cool. Something you don't really think about it unless it's like called attention to, but totally makes sense in my mind. Yeah. All right. And I wrote so much that this notebook is now done, full of podcast information on nice. to notebook two. 
<laughs> so, other characters. Gilgamesh, um, played by mm-hmm. Madong Siok. Uh, I really liked his and Angelina Jolie's like connection. Yeah, I like um, the relationship as well. I really because it wasn't it. like it was. Yeah, it wasn't like a you know like a romantic like they were one in love. It was like but they a, were still. They actually mentioned I saw in an interview. They were like we're like two soldiers that are just like completely loyal and care about each other deeply yeah, kind of exactly. thing. And I yeah I really like that. Uh, we had Karoom, who was played by Harish Patel. He was the documentary guy um, that was following. <laughs> puts his face around. How many cameras do you have? <laughs> Uh, we had Crow, who was the main deviant, played by mm-hmm. uh, Bill Skarsgård. He also played Pennywise in mm-hmm. It. So, I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. And then, in the post-credits, we get Eros, played by Harry Styles. Um, that's an interesting character. Uh, do you, What do you know about Star Fox? Also known as Eros. Not much other than, like, he's uh, an eternal. He's the brother of Thanos. Yeah. Um, which also, that's another thing. So, this technically, this movie kind of set up what Thanos was, because Thanos is technically a deviant. Yeah. So, I don't know if how this aligns in MCU universe, but he definitely is of that eternal deviant, so whatever So, do you think he was lineage. created by the uh, Celestials directly, like the other deviants, or was he like, like Air evolved... Mesh? from other deviants and like somehow like bloodlines got mixed. I think he's evolved from other deviants because there there was a line of Eternals that had their own children. Yeah, right. I forget who Thanos' dad is. Daddy Thanos. I hate Thanos that. Thanos was like that. born, his mom like knows he has, she has like a vision of like what he's gonna do and she like wants Ooh. to kill Thanos. And his daddy's like, no, he's a baby boy. And, and then he, <laughs> Thanos eventually kills his mother and later on, yeah, it's savage. I saw a theory where it was like or just a possibility someone said, like, maybe, and I don't know if this has any ties to the comics or is just, like, something someone said, but maybe the Celestials, when they were first starting out with, like, this whole process of, like, implanting Celestials in worlds to, like, be born, um, they, like, s- made not, like, they made actually, like, real Eternals, not, like, these synthetic robots they can just, like, program and reboot and stuff, like the mm-hmm. ones we see in the movie. Maybe they started out with, like, real beings like biological yeah like biological beings um and I mean, that makes sense because the deviants are more biological right so. but then they when they sent them down to like planets they like evolved and grew to love the like humans more and so they like ultimately this happened and they were like well we're just gonna not use real things we're just gonna make robots kind of like what we see now but now the robots are like evolving and stuff too so uh, it's just a possibility so that, that brings up a question though remember in uh infinity war when thanos was showing like, the vision of his planet and like how it became that way do you think there was a celestial that was born from his planet oh and maybe that the like, whole reason why he wanted to mm, do the genocide yeah was, again the main point in this movie was the whole point of a celestial like the yeah. rebirth cycle is that there's an egg put into a planet and, and once the it planet reaches has to a get certain to a population of uh, intelligent, intelligent people. So yeah, like I saw something that like, yeah, Thanos stopped that from happening because they like, he snapped and like the population was halved. So like it wasn't at that capacity anymore for the like emergence to happen. When people are snapped back into existence, they are added back to five years of that half of the world that was still there having babies and moving on. So that probably mm-hmm. like overflowed it and they're like, all right, emergence time is about to happen. So yeah, Thanos definitely like stopped that. That's interesting though. I didn't think about what you said like that like his goal could be just to to do that to stop what happened to his world if like us a uh, celestial was born out of his world kind of thing. Yeah. And that's what we see in, in Infinity War. Um, that He doesn't really explain it that way in um, no, Infinity I feel War like and Endgame. But <laughs> that would have made more sense. Because think about it. If the Avengers knew about the Celestial Egg, like, right. they would have like, done I'm something about it. trying to help it, you. Know? But also, if you think, though, to in Endgame, when he was like, when they're like fighting back, he's like, "You guys aren't grateful for what I'm doing. I'm going to just wipe out everyone and start over." Like that doesn't seem like a very heroic. I'm trying to save your planet kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. But anyways, Eros, Harry Styles. So in the comics, Eros can like kind of manipulate people's like sex drive with if he's like within 25 feet of them, and is like pretty much like the god of like lust and sex and 
stuff like that. Um, and actually, done by Harry Styles. Well, yeah. that's interesting because he's such a like, <laughs> like in the comics, he like causes a lot of mayhem. So I think casting Harry Styles, someone who's very like loved and universally appreciated, I yeah. think that'll help offset that a little bit so that people won't be like, this guy's disgusting. Why would we care for him? It's like Harry Styles. Like he might be able to bring a different light to that. And also in the comics, there's actually a, um, what happened to, I saw a lot, did a lot of research and one thing that kept coming up was that he, I think like sexually assaults someone and is defended in court by She-Hulk, who is a, um, like, what's it called? Like a lawyer. Attorney? Yeah. Attorney. So, and she, She-Hulk is like in the process of filming, I believe. So maybe we'll see some crossover there. Maybe not. I don't know. It if, definitely is because I, I, I know that it's filming because yeah, I know it's calls. Fil- yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyways, so he also runs around with Pip, which is that creature that, like, drunk teleports. Mm. And that's one direction they could choose to go. Because <laughs> he's... He was in one direction. <laughs> All right. You make me want to stab my eyes out. Okay. Um, but Zinga Kachow, we're out of dialogue duty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know much about the Eternals going to this whole movie, but I wanted to ask out of all of these characters... Which power would you want to have? Out of all the Eternals, what power would you want to have? Let's recap. We got Superman. That's, that's, that's the thing. With I no know, ice I, breath. I, I'm feeling like I'd be like Fastos. Because think about it. The intelligence that he has to be able to like literally engineer anything. Yeah, you could like, just like make a huge invention and like sell it. Because we'll think well, about it. Well, he no, invented you can mimic the steam all the engine. other powers. Uh, kind of. Yeah, but he so listen, listen. He invented the steam engine back mm-hmm. when like the plow became big so what would that look like now like what is the invention he could make with now that we wouldn't be ready for that like two thousand years from now would be like the next big thing that could start like the next like age like the 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 steam engine kind of like jump-started the like industrial revolution the industrial age i i would say stable multiversal travel but we're already about to see we're about to see unstable multiversal travel so that's not going to be good but doing it in a safe and effective way would be nice um you know, the closest who, thing we've seen to that would be in Spider Verse, actually, with Oscar Isaac. No, I'm saying in the in the real life, like what? Oh, like IRL? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, we're about to see that, like IRL, like <laughs> multiversal travel. Where? No, I, I didn't thought, know I Elon Musk was like working a, on that. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. So for us right now, that'd probably be a warp drive. Okay, honestly. that'd like, be cool. Not being able to move at the speed of light, be able to move faster than the speed of light due to the bending of space time. I. For if I was thinking selfishly, I would say I would want Cersei's power be, because she turns things into other things like transfiguration. I could literally turn my crap into gold, and I would. <laughs> Why is that? I, go to. I would be my own golden goose, and I. Could <laughs> oh my god! Wrap out gold and sell it. That means you have to touch rich. your gold though, or your crap. My gold. I'm touching gold. It doesn't matter. I'm like Midas. Midas is touch, but like I can control it. That joke was made in the movie, but yeah, it was. I, I, oh. <laughs> yeah, by Black Knight. That's the thing. Like, I don't. That's that's useful and all, but like, I don't know. I don't even need to hear the rest. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, that's probably actually the next thing that he would invent. Actually, atomic reconfiguration, turning crap into gold. Well, no, just for anything. You could <laughs> like, like that would solve all the problems with pollution. That would solve problems with getting stuff poured into the oceans, agriculture. Th- that would solve uh, a lot, but I think it's that still sounds yeah. like a temporary fix because like. It, what do you, if you're like turning garbage into like gold? Any you're making anything recyclable then? That's the thing. That's so you can true. make anything into anything else you need, uh, and that can also be used in other processes. So, for example, say you need to make a city. Depending on what kind of rate you have or what kind of conversion rate you have, you can theoretically combine that with like say 3D printing technology and build cities in like days instead of years. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well. There's also, let's not sleep on the finger guns. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, you could go like, and then like actually shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if I'm being le- legitly, completely honest, I think I would want Druig's power if I'm like thinking like logistically, because you can just control people to like do whatever, you know? And that's like really mm. OP. And I'm worried that I'd be tempted by that, but yeah. That, and plus, I'll also mess with your own mind. So, like, I don't know. I don't think I'd want that. Well, which which one do you want? Oh, and also Gilgamesh's Iron Gauntlet, um, or Karun, the power of documentary filmmaking. 
As a film major, I already have that power. <laughs> I think I'd still be the engineer. Okay. Yeah. Or Eros, Harry Styles, sex god. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, wait a second. Wait. <laughs> I mean, I already have that super... I'm just kidding. I do okay, not have that okay. superpower. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I also wanted people to know, leave a comment, what uh, Eternals power would you want and why? Let, leave a comment or, like, review or whatever. Genuinely curious. I feel um, like sprites would be cool, too, with, like, all the illusions oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. You know, I could make people think, think I'm giving them gold. And then yeah. once I get the money... That's actually shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what were you asking about the Deviants? No, what did you think of their uh, design? They were kind of generic. Like, I don't know. It, they were... I could not tell any of them apart. Until the one turned into, like, sort a of dude. human, like, yeah, a dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to Pennywise. I thought they were cool. Like, I really like the idea of, like, the tendrils that were, like, go out and, like, jump at people. That's That part I really did. Like, but other than that, they felt like generic, like, d- vicious dog creature things. What about you? Well, that's the thing. They they, they did the like, one cut scene later to, like, when they killed Ajax. And then they all became, like, different specific animals. I'm like, right. oh. I, I guess that makes more sense, but I feel I like guess if they did that. <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't, when like, that happened, they had to fight before that, and like I wasn't tracking any of that. Yeah, well, anymore. when that happened, they were like they turned into different specific creatures. I was like, I guess they were different creatures. I didn't know. <laughs> exactly. So I feel like if something like that was shown. I mean, you couldn't have shown Ajax dying before because that would have ruined the flow. Ruined there. the spoil. Yeah, ruined, but the sup- the <laughs> ruined the spoil. Yep, <laughs> spoiled the <laughs> the reveal. That's the that's. There that's you the go. Phrase. English. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined the soil. The, that's why they need to the plow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like they could have shown like the different uh, ones. I don't know differently to make it more clear. However, the fight that was going on when they're in the jungle, I love that, especially that from was the CGI cool. perspective. Yeah, be able to even get something in that kind of lighting where it's like all dark and dim, and be able to get like a proper reflection captures, or to make sure that things are. Um, it just legitimately looked proper. Uh, yeah. That's very hard to do. And they did it like seamlessly. Yeah. Um, it did I, not take I me agree. out of it at all. They, there was one thing I think I mentioned to you that like when I think Angelina Jolie, like not, not in that scene, but in like one of the desert scenes, I think like when they're ambushed at uh, like their like little hideout, uh, like Ilkamesh's little hideout. Um, maybe it was a different place. I don't know. Different desert. There are a lot of deserts, but um, they like, she jumps you know, on, maybe she jumps on the, back of like one of the deviants and is like wrangling it and i feel like that usually like looks very janky when people like they try to cg that and i thought like her weight and gravity was very realistic and done really well that's something i noticed i was like wow good job team (laughs) vfx team (laughs) team as if i'm a part of it (laughs) please hire me that that's one thing i love too when they when you're getting into babylon for the first time and i'm like i saw the gates i'm like oh we're in babylon and like yeah then it did like the big wide shot and it's just like Babylon. Babylon. Like, yeah, I, know I, I got that. Art history, yeah. <laughs> I really like just, speaking of that like huge watch, I just like the scale of the whole movie, but just the scale of the things in the movie. Like, when they showed uh, the Celestial for the first time, I was yes, like, Yes, air mesh. Whoa. I was like, yeah. Just like his Dude, that's one thing I, dots of his face. I told you that before. Like, at the end of the movie Compared is to how it. they should have done Galactus when it came to yeah. Fantastic Four. Um, it was perfect just the presence of him it was literally the grandest yeah instead like, of it being uh, a giant space cloud <laughs> space yeah. fart <laughs> T- turn that into gold Whew, you're set <laughs> um no, okay actually think about it right there has to be a giant gold space fart somewhere like in reality like in some kind of nebula i just, just found my new gold. life mission to find that <laughs> <laughs> stopping the podcast <laughs> i need to get going <laughs> But back to the scale, back to the tank, back to the scale. So I really like yeah, back to the tank from space farts. Let's go. Um, <laughs> I really liked that. That scale reminded me of like Rogue One when it was like the Star Destroyer and then like the dish yes. of the Death Star. It reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. And also I felt like Dune had really good scale. So just a lot of good like showing of scale in movies recently, which I really appreciate because I don't think we've honestly seen that much of that grandness before and i think recently we've seen that which is well, really cool seen it properly and this yeah, is yeah, yeah. yeah they're doing it in good in like a proper way which is awesome yeah but speaking of cinematography and just like cameras and stuff 
There was so much posing. Yeah, an annoying was. amount of posing to but me. But you gotta keep in mind the robots, man. They're that's they're programmed. They're programmed. <laughs> like, why am I moving over here, like next to you, perfectly to align? Why did, why did I <laughs> land like this? Like arms fully, like ready for battle. Like, what? I can't control myself. I'm just too majestic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I feel like Yelena, Black Widow's sister, would not be happy with that. <laughs> Yeah, she'd literally just look at them all and be like, what a bunch of posers. Yeah. (laughs) Just speaking of, like, Celestials and stuff, I'm glad we're, like, opening the door to this. When when do you think, like, we'll see them next? Uh, Maybe Guardians? Maybe... Maybe Thor, Love, and Thunder? I'm going to say... I don't think Thor, Love, and Thunder. We're going to see uh, the God Butcher there. So that's not going to be dealing with Celestial. It's going to be a lot of God stuff there. But it's... I feel like when it comes back to Guardians, that's when we're going to be getting into more... Mm-hmm. Like that's 2023. I think um yeah. It was interesting. The, the main celestial that took them at the end was Arishim. No, it was Arishim. Yeah. Yeah. So he says like you will be judged or like we'll judge based on your memory. So he's not like the judge ex- executioner or whatever, like all of that. He is I think sort of a judge in like the comics but like so he obviously like re- takes them into that black hole which is really cool, but like back to like some sort of higher power. So I've seen a lot of thought that like when the next time we see those three that were taken by that celestial, they might be in like a court of like the living tribunal kind of thing. That's what I was going to say. And maybe arrows will be like helping defend with the other eternals. Um, The living tribunal is that three headed thing. We saw a reference to that in Loki, that like statue. Um, But yeah, in the comics, I think he's like sort of like a super high power that can like judge a lot of like cosmic things that sometimes the celestials even report to he's so. pretty much the protector of the universe at a universal scale he makes sure that uh, eternity and infinity are on track and that they're doing what they need to do and eternity and infinity are like literally the embodiments of uh principles of the universe i really liked that um also the celestials just had like little asteroids like orbiting him because his gravitational pull was so strong i thought that was really cool that would suck that'd be like bugs like to, I guess I'd be like bugs to him, like, dang, get these freaking! I'm so get fat, yo, mama, you know? so fat that <laughs> asteroids are orbiting. <laughs> yeah, and then the next post credit scene, we get the Black Knight uh, and the Ebony Blade, which mm. in the comics can cut through celestial armor, so we might get some sort of conflict there. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but also <laughs> in the comics, sometimes it's like a fake blade, and like vampires put it there. Which the voice off screen was Blade, who like deals with vampires, so we might be mm-hmm. seeing. Uh, uh, Mahershala Ali's blade. Um, it's not Jeffrey Wright. I thought it was Jeffrey Wright. I was so mad when I was wrong. Um, but we might see Ma- uh, Mahershala Ali's blade and uh, the Black Knight team up. In the comics, they do, and uh, it's like a special British task force, MI thirteen, and they go against like paranormal mm-hmm. invasions, like vampires, zombies, uh, yep. maybe zombies, werewolves. I, mainly vampires werewolves, is what I know. Yeah. Secret invasion. I think they have an impact on too. And I think Secret War, Secret Invasion is like a show on Disney Plus coming up. So maybe we'll see them there. I don't know. That could be. Yeah. We had the final battle. I didn't like the, the battle like when we were getting every time we got closer to the Celestial and like the volcano. But I loved just like the Speedster versus like Icarus fight. And then yes. when like the tech guy like held down Icarus. I thought that was sick. That was really cool. That was cool. amazing. Yeah. Um. What, were your, what are your thoughts on just the whole premise of, like, there's a celestial inside Earth that's being born? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Marvel's done that before in the comics, so it's not, like, a new, new Yeah, but, thing. like, in the MCU, what but do you it's, think? In the MCU, I think it was a good idea. I'm sure some what-if universe where it's, like, what if the celestial was born and, like, Ooh. the Earth died. <laughs> that would be the, the source prop- what-if. It's just, like, all the heroes are there, and then it just, like, Earth explodes, and they're, like, the end. <laughs> I don't think if Earth blows up, if the universe won't die, but, like, there's correlations to where if earths collide again i was talking about this with convergences before because earth is like the center of most universes um i'm the center of so my I, universe I, so i don't know how that would work out in that case <laughs> but yeah it, it i think it was interesting to see how it was done also what did you think of the scale of him like i felt like do you think it was the small baby celestial was yeah you know, small but he's also, also a baby. we had a joke about that um <laughs> you had a joke i was not affiliated with this <laughs> <laughs> Daniel thought he was there, coming out like dick first. <laughs> but no, I didn't think it was dick first. I thought it was um knees first because I thought it was the knees and I, you know, because there was like two points. You thought like, it was oh, pelvic really thrusting small. out of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then there's another joke we made where it was like, what if it was like a butt came out first instead of like the head and like the hand. He's just twerking. That, like, a thought out of the womb. <laughs> I thought it was actually kind of messed up if you think about it. Like they aborted 
Erishim's like the celestial's baby, but like as he was coming out of like Earth's vagine, like that's messed up. I mean, that's all you have to say about that? An abortion? Wow. I, I mean, no, wow. like here's the thing. It's celestial. It's so grand in nature. You're. It's like the dilemma where you have to choose to save 10 people or it's, it's a trolley dilemma. Yeah, you took your know trolley, the trolley, <laughs> the trolley <laughs> to get both <laughs> rails. No, but yeah, that's that's an interesting thing that I thought was debated, and I literally don't know like the answer. Like, I don't know if there is like an answer depending on who you are, but like the thought that like they're killing the celestial to save Earth, but that in turn prevents a lot of other like, like billions, if not trillions, of lives being born, being created. It ultimately comes back to like caps ideology and end game where he's like we're not trading lives vision like we're all getting out of this we're trying to all get out of this that was like the goal yeah well, it brings up a valuable question like is it worth it to like take a life to save a certain number of lives you know or I is it worth it i have to, the ability to answer that question <laughs> or is it worth it to take a life if you're preventing other lives you know what i mean like there, that's a difference there like not existing is different than Daniel, we're getting too close to some you know issues. I mean? <laughs> so, Icarus flies into the sun. What did you think about that? He did fly too close to the sun. I felt like it was a very poetic way to end it. Um, yeah. It felt kind of emo, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it was. He was like, in exile. Uh, but he, was like, uh, he was like, you know what? I'm going to just... Go out I, in a blaze I of the glory. the shot, though, when he went away from Earth and they like, looked back for a second. Yeah. It's very Superman-esque. Oh, yeah. It's funny because the, the sun gives him his power. She didn't the yeah sorry she didn't she say that she took a lot of inspiration from yeah um, who directed this like Chloe I think I said it at the beginning uh it's Chloe Man of Steel Zhao Zhao anyways yeah. what do you think about the twist that Icarus was evil and killed eh, Ajax I didn't see it coming I'll be honest but there were hints in there so like when you look back yeah there were hints I think it yeah. was good because like he at one point I think he even tries to like mention it to Cersei but like is interrupted and so like you could tell something was up. But you didn't know what. So I think that was balanced pretty well. If the team knew what was going on throughout, like from the get, like when they were born, you know what I mean? Right. I feel like they would have had more people would have been on board. Except for, I feel like Cersei would not be on board because she. No, she wouldn't be. It was like all about like. La la humans, I love them. Woo. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like she looks looks at us like we're puppies or something, you know? Yeah. (laughs) That's Actually, right. I shouldn't say that because she's dating Black Knight, so that's kind of weird. Oh, oh, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, yeah, no, stop that. Yeah, I mean that's kind of we got to think about. With that reminds me, have you seen um that one on Amazon Prime that with uh, J.K. Simmons, uh, Invincible? I haven't seen it, but I know the comics. I know what happens. Okay, so. well, spoilers for that for the next like couple seconds, but yeah, and it, he's like the kid is like, what about mom? And he's the dad is like. She's more of like a pet to me. I live for thousands of years. Like, yeah. they die. Like, I've had many lovers. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Um, anyways, yeah. unspoiler for that. You know, in the comics, he goes to some other planet after he's beaten. And he, like... Don't spoil it! I haven't seen it! I haven't seen it! It's comics. I don't know if they're going to do it or not. Well, they might! I don't want to know! Well, he mates with him. Ah! I'm not, I didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> anyways... Yeah, what were you, so Thena got vengeance on um, the Deviant. I thought that was cool when she, like, sliced him up. Yep. Um, too bad he wasn't Wolverine. Could have, like, healed in, like, the Wolverine. Well, he was Ajax, so he had her power, so he could have been, like... Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot about her power, I think, when we were mentioning powers that we could have. Healing. I don't know. I don't, that'd be cool. Like, pretty handy, but, like... I feel like if it came with eternal life, I'd go for that, but, like... No, I don't know about eternal, eternal life. Eternal. Life is valuable because it's fleeting. Gotta make the most of every day. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? I want to hear your creative solutions for uh, what you would do with this like giant celestial that is now just in the middle of the ocean. Well, what do you mean, like as a human problem? Yeah, if you like were given the task, like we have this giant thing, we don't know how to move. What would you do with it? I saw something on New Rockstars that said they should make just a giant skate park out of it, and <laughs> it's just like okay, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> go down the just like in the eyes, the, like the hand. In the round bits, yeah. Just... Half pun? <laughs> Whatever. I don't know skating terms. <laughs> um, or like a nice vacation getaway. Just stay in like, <laughs> stay in the Celestials 
right ear. Woo. Oh no, I'm in the nosebleed section. His literal nose. <laughs> <laughs> in all sincerity, I feel like that could be something that comes up later on in the MCU to where Actually, I don't know, because he was transmuted to like marble. Yeah. So I don't think he has a celestial Yeah. I would make a giant like wherever his dongle would be. Oh I'd my gosh. Sculpt- <laughs> <laughs> no like i, I was would, compensating I, I for something um <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know because i i would have to see how much of him is how much of him do you actually think is out because like there's his head but it's not all of his head and it's his hand he's probably like it's his hand and his head so he's probably like pushing off with his other hand like and at the core of earth yeah hmm. so it might be like his upper chest is in the ocean still I wonder if that would like affect gravity in any way in his in the area he's at, just because of how much mass he is. I feel like the freaking what's it called, the Eternal that came out of space and like grabbed him at the end, that would just jack up like t- tides so much. Uh, yeah, that's why the clouds. <laughs> like came anyone in like surfing that. is dead. <laughs> like what? <laughs> that would suck. I mean, who knows? I mean, he's also able to control his own um, mass anyway. At least, assumingly, because he's able to make a black hole and escape from there also a black hole appearing next to earth probably would mess up a lot of things even if it's just for a second but we'll just ignore that anyways what are your thoughts on the twist that the eternals are like robots it makes sense why they don't age in my mind i feel feel like the explanation that he came up with as to like why they're designed that way so they can't evolve yeah um, makes sense yeah it was was well done also i think that their armor might be made from uh unstable molecule weave okay again for those of you that don't know in the comics unstable molecule is pretty much if it gets damaged it'll like repair itself or it will just not do anything and that's what we saw in the cases and i thought it was cool i said uh the fact that they are like robots they should like start rusting and they're kind of like the tin man like what if we just saw cosmic energy angelina jolie just like rusted (laughs) Daniel, it's I like understand very, they have cosmic energy. I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> it's like, Jeez. oh no, I'm just, I'm just trying to say, like, imagine, like, Cosmic Terminator, where it's just, like, he's just, this is Arnold in space, but he's, like, all rusty. Hmm. I really like their ship design, too, the, uh, like, Dorito-looking thing. Kind of looked like a Kit Kat from the back. Yeah, that'd be good for, like, a Doritos commercial. Yeah. Eternally tasty. Oh, this also had the first... <laughs> <laughs> Eternally tasty. Um, It's finger looking good. I think that's something else. Is that? KFC. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just thinking you lick your fingers for a Dorito. What's the Dorito slogan? I don't know that. Um, I think their thing now is that they don't even have to say their name. Dorito slogan. Like, we don't even have to We're say their name. We're a triangle. It's for the bold. Wait, their target. Wait. Doritos is for. Their target age group is 16 to 24. We're about to age out of Doritos. What? No. <laughs> I'm never aging out of Doritos. I will be 24 forever. <laughs> Dang, my gosh, I have like a year and a half left of Doritos. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. What the heck? What am I supposed to do? Have Tostitos after that? Just kidding, sponsor us Tostitos. What What? What do we get after Doritos? Can I look up chips? Uh, what, like chip, chip age range? Age. <laughs> target audience <laughs> per brand. What? What's Pringles? What's target audience? Uh, Pringles... I didn't know Chips had oh, Pringles target audience. A target audience? 10 to 25? <gasps> we only have two and a half years left of Pringles. You have two and a half. I have like... You have two. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the like six months when you're 25 and I'm 24, I'm just going to eat Pringles every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what's the what's other good chips? Tostitos target audience. Oh, that's a family one. Bleh. What other chip? Lay's. Yeah, Lay's is a good one. Middle's now worth, targeting the adults worth. as well. Its main customers are young audiences interested in sports, entertainment, cinema. I'm interested in cinema. So we're interested in cinema, so we're good. But it's a, Lay's target audience is anyone that likes air in their chips packs. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. Let's hard back to the tank. We've been talking about chips for too long i was shocked by that but yeah and this is the first mcu sex scene so that Wait, was is it really i didn't even think of that yeah what other one is there it was very pg for yeah it was sex scene. the director said she wanted to show like this meaningful connection they had so they she said she they filmed it like at this the most beautiful time of day which was like i think it was like golden hour in like a beautiful location yep. which was like in the desert which like logistically we kind of suck for having sex like in a desert like sand Puh. 
I hate sand. But anyways. <laughs> well, I don't know, because like, I always got back from Arizona, and, like, I don't know. There's some spots out there I'd be like, they you know. They scoping it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, she said, they said they filmed this the sex scene in, like, 25 minutes, which is, like, pretty fast. But also, it was, like, one shot, and it was, like, over. Like, the sex scene wasn't really yeah. anything in my mind. It's cool that it was, like, the first one. It's definitely a step forward, but, yeah. like. It wasn't really much, but it does show it's the beginning of their complicated relationship that they have like on and off for like 5,000 years. How did your last relationship end? Oh, my ex flew into the sun. <laughs> he flew too <laughs> close to the sun. Oh, that like analogy. No, literally he flew into the sun. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, lovely. That is cool that you could say that though. I mean, it sucks that it happened, but like. What, that your ex flew into the cool sun? That's a cool thing to be able to say like not fi- metaphorically, like figuratively, like literally. My ex can fly or could fly. I don't know. Oh, I thought you were saying like that they spoke. Let's move on. Good. So <laughs> at the end, it said that apparently the Eternals will return. And uh, Kumail Nanjiani, the like Bollywood guy with finger guns, pew pew. He said that that was when he found out that they would be back, that they would have like another part. He thought that was the only movie. He wasn't sure if they'd come back for anything, and that's how he found out was just at the premiere. Like when he saw that, they were like, he was like, "Oh, I guess we get to oh. do more of this. Cool." <laughs> and <laughs> let's jump into a famous segment that I've never done before <laughs> called Fun Fact Friday. Even though this is released on a Thursday, so Pip's brain, the like little gro- goblin guy, mm-hmm. uh, is in his chest. It's not in his head. So if he's shot in the head, should be fine. Um, Harry Styles what's apparently. In his, what's in his head then? air like lays chips i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, all the alcohol he's been drinking probably you know, uh continue so harry styles reportedly signed on for five movies um holy sh- yeah which i thought they said marvel said like they were not gonna do big contracts anymore but i guess they're like we gotta lock down harry styles <laughs> <laughs> he needs to go one direction <laughs> um okay i also uh, another fun fact moving swiftly along uh they were filming this in 2019 around the Canary Islands, and they discovered, like, bomb remnants uh, from a military shooting range. I remember this when this happened, and they had to, like, evac, like, everyone from there until they could make sure it was, like, clean and safe. Um, not clean, it's just safe. Okay. So that, like, delayed filming for a little bit. I remember that was when that was announced. I was like, whoa. Uh, just imagine that. You're, like, on set. You're like, okay, here's your spot. Like, you know, like you mark your spots on the set. The guy that's doing the marking, just, like, click, and then... <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is another really interesting fact that I think I saw. I, I'm going to butcher this name, but Ramin Dejawadi, he scored this. And this is his second MCU film that he scored. I want you to guess what his first one was. Because the music in this was like grand, right? Yeah. So I don't think I'm get thinking it. it's going to be either the opposite of that or in line with that. So what do you think? Guess. Uh, Winter Soldier. No, it was the original Iron Man. Really? Yeah, so I thought that was crazy that like it's taken this long for them to bring him back. I thought he did a good job. But he also did Game of Thrones, so he was kind of like working on that for a while. Yeah. And then he also did Westworld and Pacific Rim. And he's also done, he does the Gears of War series. He composes the music for that. Cool. Um, another fun fact, um, Keanu Reeves and Rami Malek, they were considered for the role of Druid. Um, I'm glad, no offense, but Keanu Reeves, he's got the Matrix. Let him have that, you know? Oh, isn't he going to be coming on as Moon Knight? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I can see him being Moon Knight. Like, Keanu, yeah. Moon Knight, all the way. I think Rami Malek would have done a good job as Druid as well. Yeah, he would have. This is the second longest MCU film behind Endgame. Uh, Endgame's like three hours, one minutes. One minutes, one minute. And uh, this one, Eternals, is two hours and 37 minutes. I had to leave to pee in the middle of it. And I missed, apparently, yeah, a scene did. where they made the bands. Wait, did you say... The bands. <laughs> let me, let me redo I'm that. leaving that in, you know. Did you say the bands? Man, you suck at that. Hey, <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, back to the tank. I thought it was interesting that Lor- Lauren Ridloff, the deaf um, actress, she mm-hmm. they worked her and her like translator f- uh, for sign with sign language. They worked to develop a like new sign language for how to say the mythological names because in like american sign language they don't have words for like icarus and like the other names so they had to like develop their own things for that <laughs> so i thought that was kind of unique 
yeah, that's all I had to say about that. We've been talking a while about that. I think that's pretty much all I have as well. Okay. I mean, again, like I love the end shot to where it's like the wormhole black hole thing. Yeah. yeah it makes so much sense. And that was awesome. Props to the VFX team. Like that was amazing. Chef's I'm kiss. I'm excited to see where this is going to go. Like honestly, like I'm... I feel like this was, like, the groundwork to get things started. Yeah, like, that's what I was saying, like, comparing it to Ultron. Like, this is definitely, it's, like, starting the next chapter. Um, yeah. But I feel like all of, like, the last things have been, like, the starting the next chapter. Like, Loki opened us to the multiverse. This, next chapter was Celestials. What was a uh, WandaVision opening us up to more magic and with Doctor Strange. Falcon Winter Soldier didn't really open us to anything. Actually, no, the more of the, like... Uh, the lady from Seinfeld that has Val, that's her name. <laughs> <laughs> the next chapter of Seinfeld. <laughs> oh Anyways. God. All right. Are you ready for patron shout outs? <laughs> yes. Hit me with them. Cue the episode music. Boosh. Got patron Lori, Frank, Rick, Lisa, Evan, Tony. Thank you so much for pledging the tier. You can see the shout out if you want to support us over on the Patreon. The link is down in the description. You get episodes early, special benefits, cool perks, all that jazz, and more. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. That is how we're able to do stuff like the giveaway. Again, if you're interested in the giveaway, all you have to do on YouTube is subscribe. Um, and you're entered. If you're already subscribed, you're already entered for a chance to win six months of Disney Plus on us or the equivalent um, monetary amount value. That's for two people. Um, it's until we get 101 subscribers. So, yeah. Uh and let's do review slash comment shout out. So I want to ask people what um, eternal superpower would you want? Like we said, so leave a comment mm-hmm. or review, including Let us that. Know. Um, and tell us why. Like what? Like why did you, you don't have to? It might be funnier if you're just like, I want the. Uh, I want speed. Why? I'm not talking. I, I want speed. speed. <laughs> That's it. No, but actually, if you want to let us know why, that'd be cool. Um, I'm checking, and I don't know if we have any new comments. I think we had another comment from, like, a bot. So, yeah. Lovely. I think next episode we should do chips, um, <laughs> just going through a tier list of chips and their uh, target audience ages. <laughs> I, I can do that. I'm down. Uh, and we like try one. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, I get to eat. I like that, actually. Maybe we'll do that another time. Anyways. Uh, all right ready for the introduction yep tell me when. when we just talked about what we want to talk about and now we're done Blah. thank you so 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 much for listening really 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 appreciate it um i know every, for the past like four episodes have been like next time we'll do the eternals coming up soon and now that the eternals have come i'm like what's next i think we have what's it called at the end of the month starting hawkeye we're gonna try to get back into mcu phase three doing stuff with that and we have i have my friend coming on the podcast soon hopefully some more special guests yeah so stay tuned thank you for watching goodbye